Welcome Gover you're back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today as we were recording? We are 20 days until kickoff. Okay. You know, you so know what sounds better? Kyle. It, what sounds better is that when this is released, it's 19 days until cool. kickoff. Okay. So between your power pause and your, your countdown, are you are you Tony or Tom? You gotta pick one. I'm I'm myself, Jared. As <laughs> as, as as much as I respect the hell out of Tony and Tom, they are the goats. Tom I am me. I am me. Tom Nee. <laughs> Gangland says your name is Tom Nee. All right. Kyle, we have a lot to get through today. Um, we're gonna do some camp updates. Uh, nothing, nothing from a format spectac. Uh, nothing from a format perspective is spectacular here. It's camp. We're talking about camp. In fact, Kyle, I don't, I don't have my. Hold on, hold on. Camp branding. There we go. Forgot about the branding. There you go. Uh, no, that's a that's a different camp, Nomad. Although you may have just picked <laughs> the artist for the end of the show. Um. Aha. All right, today, yeah, today we're we're gonna we're gonna go into the offense. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about some talk about the offense here. Uh, Ryan Day uh, gave a little talk about the updates about the offense here of the past week or so of camp, and and we will yeah we'll go over that here, Jared. Now, Kyle, before and, we get too deep into it, I think our first offensive update should probably be the fact that we do have a new block O. We do, and this time, this person can actually wear it on yeah. the field. <laughs> they can actually wear it on the field <laughs> for a change here. And w when when I saw this, it, I'm like, yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, it I feel like the last couple sense. didn't Cooper wear it on the field. Yeah, but that was two years ago. Yes. Thayer Munford had it last year. I feel like... Every time we go to do this, or the past couple of years, like, I don't, I don't even, did we even know it was coming when Cooper got it? I think it was, they announced the existence of the Block O at the same time they announced who got it. So then, yeah. like, one of the big talks of the off season was who's going to get it, who's going to get it last year. And it's one of the things we talked about a lot. And then, like, this year, we never even bothered to talk about it because, of course... Because of course Bob was gonna get it. Was there any surprise? Did we did we bother even to talk about it? They, they, they talk about Bob over there like he's a walking saint. I mean, there's not a person at the WAC who has a bad thing to say about Bob. So it was uh, too obvious to even try to guess. I think is where we stood with the block O this year. So no big surprise, but the fact that it's no big surprise says a lot about Bob and who he is and what he's been through and what he's overcome and, and everything else. Yeah, and coming straight from Day, um, talking about uh, Cam Bob here, says I can talk for hours about Cam and what he's done being a captain, everything he's been through. And so we're, we are Cam Bob fans around here. Everybody loves Cam. If he can stay healthy, he's going to have an impact on this offense for sure. And, and, that, and that's the key thing. If he can stay healthy, as much as, as much as we all want to see him on the field and do great things, he's, he's got to, he's got to stay healthy here. And hopefully, hopefully from what we've heard recently where he, he tweaked something um, this week, hopefully, hopefully fingers crossed, knock on wood, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's not going to be an issue for him to get on the field. Uh, yeah, Ryan Day seemed to dismiss it, um, saying it was like typical camp stuff or whatnot. So we'll take it at face value. We'll believe Coach Day, even though Rule 1 does, in fact, say that the doctor lies. That doesn't mean that the doctor always lies. That just means that you need to uh, decipher what the, what the, uh, the coach is saying. It's a it's an analogy and it's a reference. We're not literally talking about doctors 
gangland. It's okay. <laughs> I know. I know you know. I was playing my part. You just like to tell me to fuck off. You know what? That's fair. I will accept that. All right, Kyle. Uh, what else did Ryan Day have to say? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go down the list here. I'm pulling some stuff here from uh, Buckeye Huddle. Be sure to follow them on all the social medias and uh, join join them in on their um, on their website over at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Uh, sorry, no bad. It's got me distracted. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan Day. So first, first thing here uh, regarding Parker Lewis, um, he says there's no current update. Ho- hoping to find out soon. Have not heard anything. Oh, the NCAA. Yep. Luckily, he's a kicker. So, and like, no, no, you know, this uh, this isn't slander. This isn't kicker shade. Don't don't try and twist but, it. But. But but he's just a kick like he kicks the ball. He goes out there and he kicks the ball. It's not like he has to. It's not like he has to learn an entire playbook. He sees ball. He kicks ball. And I'm not saying that kicking isn't difficult. It is. I can't do it. But you know what they say. You you go. You see the ball and you kick the ball. There's not a complex uh, playbook to be learning. Anything they anything you say. Yeah. Before the word but. Yeah, but (laughs) I feel like I was being pretty accurate this time. It's just the camp time isn't required. You were right. Uh, Your your first um, first few words. Oh, the NCAA. Yeah, that that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you needed to say for that. All right. Uh, Ryan Day Uh, then has some nice things to say about Caleb Brown, says he has a unique skill set. Um, and he's one of the guys that are looking at, at punt returner. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely the one position I'm really interested, interested in seeing. I know that Ryan day has, um, uh, JSN back there taking punts as well, but wants somebody else to as well. So it's not just JSN. Uh, but yeah, I'm really Really interested to see how who else is going to step up the plate here. Maybe it's going to be Caleb Brown, maybe someone else. So at least it's Do, good to hear that there's there's another name in the mix there. Yeah, I to me it kind of feels like a Mecca Buka. I don't know. That's that's who I have slotted at like all time returner. It feels like if I how, how do I want to say this? Um, yeah, it's the other Caleb. Uh, I don't want to say this. I feel like he's probably, why not prior for punt returner? Why not both? Yes. Yes, Jared. I knew I would Bring make back. I knew, I, knew, I knew I'd make Kyle Bring happy back. That. Nothing makes Kyle happier than two punt returners. The two returners. Even, even if prior is kind of the up returner, I, you know, you have a blocker. Why not? Um, but, but by the way, this is just this is just a big compliment for Caleb Brown um, that, that that they just consider him trustworthy. Like take take nothing else from this other than Caleb Brown got his day, got his day, got his name said by Ryan Day. And he's being considered for punt return. Like this is really just like a a very substantiated compliment. He is trustworthy is, is kind of what I take from this more than anything else. And, and there's Kyle showing off uh, his favorite punt returner duo of all time in the uh, in the live chat there. I appear when there's Evan Pryor slander. Uh, there was no slander. I no. In fact, there wasn't. I was rewriting the punt returning formation for him. That's how that's how much it wasn't slander. OK, yeah, bring them both. Put them both back there. Put them both back there. <laughs> OK, we're supposed to be looking about right. the offense and most of the, we've talked mostly about special teams at this point. <laughs> we have. All right. Uh, let's see. Ryan Day talks about uh, is one side of the ball ahead of the other. Uh, guys on the offense have been together longer, but the intensity is even between 
between the two sides. And that's something that we've heard throughout the throughout camp so far is that there's a lot of intensity on both sides of the field. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's just a lot of great energy overall. Uh, so it's great great to hear that. And I know there's there's been a lot of talks about about uh, certain players on the offensive line that hasn't really done as well as they should be and all that, but at least it's good to hear from Ryan Day that there's a lot of intensity going on on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hey, Kyle, can you do me a favor? Can you mm-hmm. uh, double check that your, your audio is absolutely recording? Because I just noticed the video is not. So as long as your audio, I, my audio and your audio <laughs> is. is good. We're good. All right. Something something messed up in OBS. It's not recording audio. So just making sure the backups are working. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> no, no, no. I can splice this audio into the YouTube. It'll be fine. All right. That's just want to make sure that uh, that we're squared away because we are definitely having an yep. OBS audio issues. But as long as Audacity is right. doing uh, its thing, so, we're fine. So Ryan Day's thing about intensity on both sides of the both sides of the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this um, another is this another rule rule number one? Well, I mean, once again, like you have to you have to sparse you have to decipher what Day is saying, right? Uh, what's actually being said here is he's saying that the offense is winning, right? Guys on the offense have been together longer, so that's that's him saying the offense is winning, but or that's him. You know, what I'm if if we're going by your your measure of everything said before the but. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. All right, uh, let's see. Next thing here, if you, Ryan Day talks about more about the offensive line. He said, if you can get 9 or 10 on your offensive line, you feel good about your depth. Uh, Zen can be 6, 7, or 8. They need to get him ready to play if something happens. They're still trying to figure out who the second left tackle will be, uh, both Zen and, and Fryer are working very hard to see who will be that third o- offensive tackle in the game. Really like Zen's athleticism and intelligence. Yeah, and, you know, there there absolutely is a, a battle taking place there, although I will say Zen's name keeps coming up a lot, uh, which leads me to believe that he will be one of the backup tackles. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, and I think another thing, and I don't think... I don't think anyone has actually discussed it or asked either Ryan Day or Justin Fry that I've seen anyway. Um, One of the things I want to know is, is there a backup tackle? Or is there a backup left tackle and a backup right tackle? I because it sounds like, you know, one of the things Ryan Day talked about in the spring and one of the things that it's starting to sound like he is getting more confident. But one of the things Mm -hmm. he talked about in the spring was finding depth on the offensive line. One of the things he talked about early in the fall camp depth on the offensive line, like he feels good about his five, but he needs to find depth. And it's starting to sound like they're finding some depth. That was that was one of the key things after spring camp that you heard a lot of different media talking about was, oh, is is the the depth for the offensive line a concern this year? And at least it's looking pretty, pretty good. That the depth is going to be there or should be there. Okay, but we shall see. We shall see. We shall uh, see. Indeed. Mention. Mentioned um, Cam Bob earlier. Uh, Ryan Day does said he's dealing with some minor issues, nothing major, typical stuff. Uh, will be full go soon. Um, he didn't do the. Uh, I think last Thursday they had a big, big uh, practice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he he wasn't participating in that. A so, lot yeah, of hopefully. older guys weren't though. Like for the record, a lot of older guys weren't. Gotcha. All right, so we'll we'll leave it that at, at that, and we'll we'll definitely keep an eye on the uh, Cam Bob and see. Hopefully, it's nothing major here. 
Uh, Ryan Day talks about uh, probably only a handful of starting jobs are actually up for grabs. Sorry, Jared, for uh, for any kind of uh, <laughs> position battles here. Well, it sounds like this isn't a surprise. A, I mean, no, no, but here. legitimately, is this a, is this a surprise? How many how many positions in the offensive starting eleven are legitimately up for grab right now? On the offensive side, I think Nomad it's said be tight end. He, tight Nomad end says is one. tight end, yep, and that's, that's it. it. And by the way, I got news for you. I think Cade Stover has it on lock. And, and I am not even sure how up for grabs tight end is at, at this point. I, I think it's probably Roria will get time, but uh, sorry, is oh, answering I, 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 Gangland. I got, I got some, Roria I got will get time. Royer, don't worry, I but I think it's I got, some things about, I got some things about Roria that I'll say in, in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, tight end would be a position uh, potentially the third wide receiver up for grabs, or maybe that's maybe that's all taken care of depending on who you were asking. Uh, uh, but yeah, I think, I think, I think outside of those two, yeah, I think everything else is pretty much on the offensive side is um, set in stone. Now, now if you're talking about what he mentioned here about, um, uh, about rotation, who's going to be in the rotation for some of those positions. Absolutely. Uh, there's, there's plenty of those up for grabs. Sure, sure. There's like there's some two depth like we all know who like the top four wide receivers are. I think that's I think that's settled, right? Marvin mm -hmm. Harrison Jr., K.J. Hill, Julian Fleming, Emeka Abuka. Now, typical offense only has three of them on the field at the same time. Are Wait you surprised? Did you just say did you just say K.J. Hill? Did I? You did. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, boy, Jared. <laughs> it's Jared stuck in 2019. Uh, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I meant. Yes, yeah, squirrel. squirrel. Exactly. <laughs> it is exactly me screaming squirrel. Uh, oh, speak, speaking of Cade Stover, Jared. Uh Ryan Day says he's improving every day. His physicality is what you notice most. He has ball skills, athletic, and has a good camp so far. Uh, Xavier Johnson is another person he talked about, said he has very fundamental. He's a very fundamental player because he has spent so much time on special teams in his career. Physical, runs routes, is smart, and has good ball skills. Yeah. And like, where does Xavier Johnson sort of fall into all of this? And again, like to go back mm -hmm. to the wide receivers and to actually, you know, say JSN instead of KJ Hill. Um, you got the four wide receivers. I think those are your four wide receivers. OK, what about Xavier Johnson and what about Cam Bob and what about there are a lot of other talented wide receivers still on this team? And none mm -hmm. of this even brings into conversation about the, the tight ends. G. Scott being a very, very talented pass receiver himself. Rotational depth. Maybe, but, but even if it's rotational depth, I just named five guys. No, I just named six guys. I just named six guys. And there's a lot of great players behind them still. Yeah, no, that's not where the six comes from. The. Oh, yeah. Name five more. Um, Brown and Burton and Grays. And I uh, see I can't do that on the spot. My ADHD takes over. <laughs> but the point is, is that Antw Antwi Antwi. Um, point is, is that. There's a lot of wide receivers on this team, a lot of wide receivers on this team. And to me, I think there are right now four who are above the rest. And they obviously want to get Bob out there. So there's five. 
how much how much rotation are we really talking about? Because if you if you if if you put another very talented wide receiver on the field, that's great. But you're taking JSN or Marvin Harrison Jr. off and, the field to do it. And and it goes back to what I mentioned about last week. How much four wide, even five wide, will Ohio State do? And even when they do four wide and five wide, will they have a tight end out there too? A tight end whose name is G. Scott. Who, by the yeah. way, I, I thought I saw somewhere. I don't know if it's in our show notes. Is he up to like, I feel like he's up to a significant weight. I don't want to say what 240. I think that's what I saw. Ooh. 240 Ooh. pounds. That's uh that's a man preparing to play tight end. So, like, with all due respect to a lot of the young guys on the team who absolutely will make an impact in college football and to, you know, Xavier Johnson, how much how many snaps are left over at wide receiver? I don't think it's a lot. All right. uh, Let's see. Some other names here that Ryan Day talked about. Oh, make sure I'm on the right page here. Uh, Vamahi. Vamahi is another offensive lineman that we talked about before. Uh, Ryan Day talks about him being another very fundamental player, spent much of the time on special... Oh, I'm reading that wrong one. Sorry. Vamahi has done some good things, uh, needs to step up. Zen and Fryer have uh, done well. Some of the young guys have uh, flashed um, in Tegra and Carson Hinsman. Yeah, it does seem like Vamahi, I would say, is maybe the the first backup guard. Um, you have Zen and Fryer as two guys. I, again, like, are they in battle for the third tackle? Will one of them take left, the other one take right? I'm not sure, but it seems to be that's, that's where that's going. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I had something else I wanted to say, but I lost it. Right, oh, I'll, I'll uh, Nomad on. said that G is listed at 6'3", 225, ESPN lies. Um, Gangland says it's got to be January measurements. Yeah, I saw a quote and I don't have the quote in my notes, but I saw where I think G Scott specifically said he was up to... And I want to say it was like either like I want to say it was like 240 potentially, I but I don't remember. Oh, OK, that's from the Ohio State, I assume, updated. What's that say? Yeah, 240. Thank you, Kyle. All right. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin Fly played in the Big Ten. His dad was a coach. He was brought up the right way as a person. He connects well with players uh, being out of UCLA. Uh, with Chip Kelly, helped him be a better coach and see the entire field instead of just between the tackles. So, yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, Ryan Day, like, that's one of his best friends, like, outside of coaching, inside coaching, outside coaching, doesn't matter. Um, I mean, they go golfing and finding out they're going to be playing each other. (laughs) I was talking about Justin Fry. (laughs) Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So he's going to say a lot of nice things about him. Um, I know that, and I think we have some quotes from some offensive linemen below, um, they seem to really like him and uh, he has not turned recruiting around yet. Um, I say, give him a full class. Like I, I don't, nec- I wasn't necessarily expecting him to take the offensive line recruiting from bad to amazing in under 12 months. That, I, that, I don't think that was a fair expectation. Um, the next class I think is where it'll be fair to judge him. That being said, Ohio State still has a really nice offensive line group coming in so far. Um, they did. And I asked, I, I don't, I don't want to say this because I almost said like, well, they lucked out because they had some really good guys in state this this year. But mm-hmm. Ohio State has missed on some really good guys in state. They have. So. I it's I think it's probably. It's probably it's a little too easy to sort of dismiss that. It's like, oh, well, they had some really good guys in state. That'll help the class. He gets a pass this year. I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to say that again, because Ohio State missed on some really good guys in state. Um, 
to maybe get like one or two of those big name out of state guys being at Ohio State for under 12 months. Maybe that wasn't uh, maybe that's not a fair expectation. All right. Uh, one receiver here that making a lot of making a lot of splash and is Emeka Buka. Uh, Ryan Day talks about Mecca saying that he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. Really intelligent. He's tough, smart, hard work is a hard worker. Is there uh, a better compliment I, you can this, get from a coach? He just needs to keep doing what he's doing. Yeah. I, I yeah, this I, is, yeah, it doesn't yeah, get much Emeka better than that. that. Mecca is that third fourth receiver that that's going to come in here yeah uh yeah a lot a lot, lot of upside and i <clears throat> no pressure of mecca but um i got i got some i got some real um i got some confidence in you regarding the uh kick returning game <laughs> um <laughs> Ganglane says he's Chris Olave with less development needed. How much development did Olave need? Olave was a monster as a freshman. I, yeah, no kidding. I mean, just go go watch the Michigan game. <laughs> For real. <laughs> That's all you need to watch is that Michigan game. All right, uh, G. Scott. Uh, Ryan Day talk about G. Scott. Uh, saying he's a willing blocker inside. Flash for sure. He's just grinding right now. It's been some really good signs. But when you're dealing with that position, there are a lot of skills that you need to possess and master. In a couple of weeks, they'll start, they'll start figuring out up roles and where that goes. And yeah, that tight end position, it's kind of that jack of all trades type of position. You got to be you got to be really good at a lot of things. Got to be good at run block, at pass block, catching, um, making, um, running routes, and, and all that too. It's you, you got to be good and putting so on many, an additional so fifteen ways. pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the tight end position something something to really keep an eye out for because is it. Because there, there's three players that could get the field there, but who's going to get the most time on the field? Yeah, um, I think it'll be interesting to see. Um, I, my money is still on Cade Stover at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, where was it here? Somebody was talking about, ah, it was um, uh, Gleitman. I was pulled this from Gleitman here, which... Uh, I think some people in our in our chat will like this one. Uh, uh, Gleitman talked about Mitch Rossi saying that he's going to have a critical role in the offense and run game blocking as well. There you go, Nomad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there man. you go. Start talking about fullbacks. Get our Discord all excited. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it's going to get the... Uh, yeah, Kyle, let's um, let's see some quotes here from Zen Mikowski um, on taking ownership of the left tackle job. Um, he's taking um, taking ownership of the job. He is comfortable there. Beyond that, uh, comfortable helping others and telling them where they need to be. Uh, Zen said last year at this time he'd line up in drills and forget the plays because everything was so big and new. He's much further along right now. Uh, he loves the coaches and, um, oh, excuse me. Uh, he loves that and the coaches are more confident in him this year. That goes back to taking ownership of the position and the role. He's up to 310 pounds now. Ooh, that, that's a good weight there. 310, 310 left tackle right there. Uh, Paris Johnson said that when he did extra work la last year and off-season work, Zen was there too. Uh, Donovan Jackson said that Paris Johnson's feet float on the grass. Nomad says, <laughs> is that all? What? Dwan laughs. What? What? <laughs> that just means he has just means he has light feet. It means he has quick feet, I think is all he means. Okay. You, you, I mean, 
I, vastly underrated, especially at the left tackle position. Everyone's fleet flo feet float compared to one. Fair. Um, <laughs> but especially at the left tackle where you're going to face a lot of speed rushers. You need to be able to. You know, the, the foot people don't necessarily understand how crazy important footwork is at left tackle. It's all feet and hands. It's all feet and hands. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Paris Johnson on Coach Co Coach Frey uh, says he, he loves the coach. Thank you. Uh, loves the coach. Um, loves his energies. Really connects with everybody in the room. Gotten to know everybody in the room really well so far. Uh, knows the interests of every player and just how to really coach them up and get the most out of them, which has been really cool. I feel like he knows, like when he comes in, he had a plan for me and for my development. Uh, he has been helping me a lot out so far. Yeah, and this is one of a few really glowing reviews um, that, that we've heard so far about Justin Fry from the players. Um and again, like if we extend if we extend rule one to the players, right? Like, of course, they're not going to go out there and <laughs> like say bad things about their coach. But when you hear them express themselves to the extent that they express themselves, then mm -hmm. when they, you, you, it's just like someone. Oh, yeah, no, he's come in here and he's he's been great and we're learning a lot from him and that that. Versus when someone just glows, when someone just is speaking genuinely and just. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like when someone is just glowing with compliment. Absolutely. All right, Kyle, did we hear from any other coaches this week? Uh, yeah, Coach Alfred was one that I really wanted to point out here. Uh, says a lot about the running back uh, room here. Uh, he was asked ask about our coach. Coach Alfred um, responded about reporters about about them recruiting uh, Mayan Williams over players such as um, John Robinson and Jalen Knighton and others. Uh, he says, "I take great offense when I." When I feel people are start taking shout at our players, I take great offense to it because there are very few of us who really know what they go through day in and day out. And so they have people take shots at them sometimes, but they don't know what shots they're really taking and why they're even taking them. I do. I take offense to that. And I probably sometimes go overboard as I'm pounding on the tables as we did, but I don't apologize for that either. Love my players, but my faith in my players, especially when they do the things we've asked them to do. Every t every team needs a coach like Coach Alfred on on in their program. Absolutely. And by the way, they went see Master Teague looking damn good in the preseason game for the Steelers. Not that he had a ton of time, but just the saying. One drive he had there, yeah. He looked pretty good. What was that? It like six carries and 30 yards on that one drive. I don't remember, but it was good. And he also had threw a really nice block. Oh, oh, don't. Oh, six, six for 31. <laughs> you were close. Yeah. Those are good NFL numbers. Six for 31 is damn yard, good NFL five numbers. Five yards a pop. Hell yeah. Take that every, every day. He also threw a really nice block um, at one point. Yeah, uh, he looked really, really good. Um, uh, Kyle, do we have anything in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag uh, regarding to anything on the offensive side? Uh, let me go through this real quick here. Uh... And if anyone has anything down in the chat they'd like to ask, I am also uh, looking there. Is it illegal for our O-line to practice against NFL Bucks, like Chase Young or the Boses? Illegal? Um, no. I mean, players in the offseason do train with NFL players. That's a thing that happens. 
Um, it's not normally a team sanctioned function. I feel like when players come back, sometimes it's like in the spring and it's not in like a capital C coaching, but they, they, they advise, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't know, like there, there, I don't know if there's any rules against like having NFL guys at like a proper Ohio state function, like at the whack, having like, you know, chase young show up with pads on and, and actually run through drills. I, I really don't know if that's against the rules or not. That's a good question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've never heard of it being done. I'll tell you that much. All right. I uh, got a question here from Nomad. And, you know, you know, this is going to be a a, uh, a Nomad type of question here, Jared. I, I feel warned. All right. You've been warned. Uh, he wants to know over under passing yards in 2022, 1,000 yards for McCord. Ooh, 1,000 yards for McCord. Um, nah, that's, that's way too high. Yeah. That maybe, I mean, maybe bump that, maybe bump that down to 600. Because realistically, even if that's like, if he gets in for like four games, they'll be at the end of games where they'll be running the ball mostly. So even if it's like he gets in late for four games, probably doesn't go north of 200 in any of them. You know, mm. that, that sticks them pretty far below 800. The only way that yeah. happens is if there's an injury to Stroud. The only, the only way that happens is if there's an injury to Stroud. When, once Ryan Day puts, once Ryan Day's up 60 nothing in, in the third quarter on Michigan, going for 100? Yeah. No, no, no. You still have your starters in. Until, until you get to 100, you still have your starters in against Michigan. All right. Uh, not, not related to the offense, but I thought this was an interesting question here regarding to the media uh, negotiation news. That's oh, yeah, that, that's um, that. Yeah, that, that, that was a thing that happened too, Jared. God, uh, <laughs> Ca not Caputo, short of Caputo things to asked, talk about this week. Yeah. Caputo asked uh, about Lee. Lee Corso created the first headgear reveal by yeah. using Brutus in 1996. Yeah. Will the media rights and his age mean he will never wear Brutus again? Uh, that's a good question. Does ESPN still send game day to Big Ten games? Uh, that's a good question. If it's not official yet, though, is it, Kyle? But if things shake out the way people are expecting things to shake out, um, the Big Ten and ESPN will no longer have a relationship. The only way, the only way that the Ohio State will appear on ESPN, and this is not starting this year, by the way, just just saying that for the record. Um, so this is not this does not apply to this season. Will be like in the playoffs. That's it. So in in theory, Ohio State goes to the playoff, but but will game day can continue to be conference agnostic. Good point. Yeah. I uh, we'll uh, see. I, I don't know because I think that I kind of think that they will. I think game day does not want to give up their position as like the pregame show. And I think the second they start only covering SEC and only covering the Big 12 or the ACC or whatever. ACC. They're already losing there. And according to the ratings, they are not. They're crushing the Fox show. They're mm -hmm. dismantling the Fox show. Is the Fox show still doing OK for itself? Absolutely. Considering it's brand new and game days, an institution. The Fox pregame is doing OK for itself. But straight numbers to numbers, we're talking straight numbers to numbers, no competition whatsoever. Game day is absolutely crushing them. And I think as long as that's the case, well, I, mean, I don't think they're going to want to give up 
they're the second they stop talking about Big Ten games or refuse to travel to Big Ten locations. When was the last time I watched game day? I know I watched well, it last year. Well, and here here's the question too: Will Will Fox Sports uh, get back into? And they'll never be anytime soon be up to par in terms of popularity or eyes watching um, college game day. But with Urban Meyer coming back to call it to yeah. uh, Fox Sports, big noon how, kickoff. How how, how, mm-hmm, how how much is that going it to helps um, a lot? He, he was he was he's marketably better. Yeah, than Bob Stoops, than Bob Stoops. was bad. Yes, he wasn't, Bob Stoops was bad. He wasn't good. <laughs> he was bad. <laughs> he wasn't good. So he was bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's it, Jared. I think that's it for the offense here. Um, you got got anything else? Um, before we wrap it up. I guess not. Um, the. I uh, just want to tell everyone, I want to ask everyone, uh, come join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, we got lots of fun stuff happening over there. You can check out our T-shirt stores. Um, hey, Kyle, can you can you can you point down for me? Uh, make sure to check out this little. Uh, uh, to to camera left more to camera left more. There, there, there. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Keep going a little bit further for me. See, you're rotating and I need you. There, there you go. All right. Uh, make sure to check out our little circulating bug down there. Uh, it's it's given you this is talking specifically to the YouTube people. Um, giving you all of the uh, all the different websites. And a lot of these are different ways you can support us. You can visit us on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.thesloopcast.com. Make sure to like and subscribe and, and click that notification bell. Do all that stuff. Um, it helps you see the show uh it can help us get advertisers in the future uh by getting those numbers up and it helps juice the algorithm uh, yes the doobly do uh helps juice the algorithm uh so that more people see and find the show speaking of more people seeing and finding the show we're also doing youtube shorts now um which gives you less than a minute highlight of the sleepcast uh so if you ever like want to show your friend like, Hey, I listened to Sloopcast. Oh yeah. Is it any, what's it like? What's it any good? Instead of like showing them or attempting to show them an hour long, 40 minute long episode, just be like, Oh look, here's their shorts channel. And you can see some highlights and show them some highlights. Um, and we also post those highlights to Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, so if you're already on those platforms, give us a follow there as well. We're at Sloopcast on all of them. We are not on Telegram. Nomad, we are not on Telegram. Um, <laughs> we are on Discord, and that's almost as bad. Uh, you, and of course, you can join our Discord server. Um, and also there's a Patreon if you want to give us help us support us with with money. Uh, Three dollars. Three dollars gives you access to all of the digital content that you could possibly need. It was a nice segue. Thank you. All right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner for this week? Uh, Speaking of offense here, Ohio State will finally well now officially knows who they will be going up against in week one in the horseshoe, September 3rd at 7.30 p.m. And that'll be a sophomore Tyler Buckner. Yeah, yeah. He will uh, be making his first career start for the Fighting Irish in Columbus. Yep. Uh, four st- high four-star quarterback of out of California? Is that right? I don't remember. Um Buchner. There you go. It looked like Buckner. It does look like Buckner, but we're not uh, to be believed, trusted, or um, not believed and trusted is good about name pronunciation. So we'll, we'll, we'll go. We'll go with what Gangland says. All right. All right. That's it, Jared. I got I got some other things to 
um, talk about in the in our Wednesday episode. So I'll, I'll save it for Wednesday's episode. Speaking of, everyone find us on our Wednesday episode. We'll be talking about the defense, if that's not obvious. Uh, yeah. So join us there. And like I said, you can find us on your podcast platform of choice and YouTube and all those other places. So uh, tonight's ending music is brought to you by Camp. Uh, they're a they're a folksy band out of uh, out of the out of Ohio. So <laughs> that made Nomad happy. So uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, just do nothing and it will be coming to your ears. If you are uh, listening to this on YouTube, uh, there's a link down in the description that will link you to the music that we are playing on the audio version. Because YouTube and music don't mix. We all know this. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is camp. <laughs>